12.5 multiplying polynomials and 12.6 special products. To multiply a monomial by a monomial, first remember that monomials are uh, polynomials that contain just one term. Then we multiply our coefficients and we multiply the variables. Um, if our bases are the same, then we add the exponents. So in example A, these are both just um, constants. So if we multiply together negative 9 and negative 3, we get a positive 27. Okay, and then for B, if I multiply A times A squared times A to the fourth, we apply that product rule, which says that if our bases are the same, we just add the exponents when we're multiplying. So I would get A to the, and then remember, if I don't see an exponent, it's understood to be 1. That would give me a to the seventh power. Okay, and here in C, when I multiply, I multiply my coefficients, negative 7 and positive 3. That would give me a negative 21. Oh, and then here's a negative. That's like a negative 1. So that would actually give me a positive 21 because I'm multiplying a negative times a negative. All right, and then uh, none of my variables are the same, so I'm just going to bring down x, y squared, and z. Okay, for d, I'm going to multiply my coefficients, 2 thirds and 9 fourths. So remember, we don't need a common denominator when we're multiplying fractions. I multiply the top times top, bottom times bottom. So when I multiply the numerators, 2 times 9, I get 18. And the denominators, 3 times 4, would be 12. Then x squared times x to the 4th would give me x to the, if I add those, I get 6. And then y to the 3rd times y would give me y to the 4th. Okay, remember, anytime we have a fraction, if we can reduce it, we want to do so. So this would reduce... The biggest number that would go into 18 and 12 would be 6. 6 would go into 18 three times, and 6 would go into 12 two times. So this would be my answer with a reduced fraction. Okay, so then to multiply a monomial times a polynomial, we have to use the distributive property. So I'm going to distribute 2 to this binomial, and that gives me 2x minus 6. Always look to see if you can combine any like terms when you're adding or subtracting, and these are not like terms, so we're done with that um, expression. Okay, for f, we have a negative 7y. That's one term, so that whole term has to get distributed to everything in the parentheses. Negative times negative, that's positive. 7 times 2 is 14. y times y to the 3rd would be y to the 4th. Negative 7y times 8y squared. The negative uh, times positive would be negative. 7 times 8 would be 56. y times y squared would be y to the 3rd. And then negative 7y times negative 1 would be positive 7y. All right, again, now just in case you're a little confused, say, for example, if this were 6a squared plus b, the only thing I would distribute would be the b. But since this is one term, there's no pluses or minuses in between the 6, the a, or the b, that's one term, so that whole term gets distributed to everything in the parentheses. So when I distribute it to the first term, I get 12. Then that would become an a to the third b. This would be a negative 54. a squared times a would be a to the third. b times b would be b squared. And to the last term, I get plus 
18 a squared there's not another a that I'm multiplying by so it's just a squared and then B times B is B squared okay so when we multiply two binomials we are just going to distribute so I need to make sure that everything in the first set of parentheses gets distributed to everything in the second set of parentheses okay so a times 2a would be 2a squared a times 7 would be plus 7a and then negative 6 times 2a would be negative 12a negative 6 times 7 would be negative 42 all right, so then I want to combine any like terms that I have. And uh, I have two terms with a's. So the ones that don't have like terms, I'm just going to bring it down. And 7a minus 12a would be a negative 5a and minus 42. And then that's it. I can't combine anything else. So that's how I can multiply two binomials. But a way to multiply two binomials to make sure that you don't forget any of the terms is the FOIL method. So FOIL stands for first, outer, inner, and last. It's just a way to help you remember the order to multiply binomials without doing it the long way. It's no different than distributing. So like I said, it just is to make sure that you don't forget anything. We multiply the first two terms that outer two terms okay let me do it like this so this is the first two terms that outer two terms the inner two terms and the last two terms and to me that looks like a smiley face like this is the nose and this is the mouth and then these are the eyebrows and these are the eyes um but that's how we would multiply by using the foil method so let's practice that okay so like i said foil stands for first the first two 4x times x that's 4x squared that outer two 4x times negative 5 that's negative 20x <laughs> then the inner two that'd be plus 3x and the last two would be negative 15 so then we combine like, to, like terms, and I get 4x squared minus 17x minus 15. All right, so this says multiply using the FOIL method, but there's a, just one binomial here. But it's really not, because we have a squared. And that means that uh, a common mistake that students make is they'll just distribute that square. Okay, well that doesn't work because square means to multiply whatever is being squared times itself. So this means 7y minus 1 times 7y minus 1. Okay, so let's multiply these together. And the first two would give me 49y squared that outer two, that would be a negative 7y. The inner two would be a negative 7y. And the last two, negative times negative, that would be a positive one. If I combine my like terms, they don't cancel out. It's the same sign. So I would get negative 14y and the plus one. Okay, so this would be my answer. Now let me just show you, if you had not written that binomial twice and foiled it, if you just distributed this square, then you would have gotten 49y squared um, plus one. Okay, so you see how this is not the same as this. This is wrong. Make sure anytime you see a binomial squared, write it twice and foil it. Okay, let's look at this last example. Multiply the first two, and I get 2x squared. That outer two, 
x times y, that would just be xy. The inner two would be plus 6xy. Remember, the order doesn't matter when we're multiplying. And then 3y times y, that would be plus 3y squared. Okay, so if I combine my two middle terms, my like terms, I get 2x squared plus 7xy plus 3y squared. And that's my um, answer. Okay, to multiply a binomial and a trinomial, um, it doesn't matter what order. You could either take uh, the trinomial, just, just as long as everything in one group gets multiplied times everything in the other group. So you could take the, the whatever's first, in this case, the trinomial, and multiply everything in the trinomial times everything in the binomial. So the first term would go to all, or both terms. The second term would go to both terms. And then the third term would go to both terms. I personally always like to go from the smaller polynomial to the bigger polynomial. So I would take this 4x and go to all three terms and then do the same thing with the negative 5. So if I multiply 4x times x squared, I get 4x to the third. 4x times 2x, that would be 8x squared. And then 4x times 3, that would be 12x. Now I have to go back and do the same thing with the negative 5. Okay, so negative 5 times x squared would be negative 5x squared. Negative 5 times 2x would be negative 10x. And negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. Okay, so let's combine like terms. There's only one term with an x cubed, so I just bring it down. And then for my x squared, that's plus 3x squared. Um, I have a 12x and a negative 10x, and that would be... 2x and minus 15 and that's my answer now there are some shortcuts for multiplying certain binomials first we have to um, define what a conjugate is now every binomial can have a conjugate and a conjugate of a binomial would be the same binomial with a different sign in the middle. That is not the same as an additive inverse. Let's look at the difference between those two. Okay, so we have this binomial, which is x plus 5. The conjugate of x plus 5 would be x minus 5. The additive inverse of x plus 5 would be negative x minus 5. So remember the additive inverse changes every sign. The conjugate only changes the sign in the middle. So if we look at the binomial 3x minus 2, the conjugate would be 3x plus 2. The additive inverse of 3x minus 2 would be negative 3x plus 2. The conjugate of negative x plus 1 would be negative x minus 1. So the first term stays the same. We change the sign of the middle term, and that's it. But for the additive inverse, we would change both signs. So it would be x minus 1. Okay, so now that we know the difference between a conjugate and an additive inverse, as long as we have conjugates of each other, um, we'll be able to do a shortcut. So let's do it the long way first. If I were to multiply these two conjugates together, let's see what we would get. 
Oh. Okay, so if I multiply x times x, I'm going to write my answer up here. I would get x squared outer, that would be a negative 5x. The inner two, that would be a positive 5x. And then the last two would give me a negative 25. Well, what happens to my middle terms? They cancel out. And I'm left with x squared minus 25. Okay, so what did you notice? When you multiply the conjugates, the middle terms cancel out. So all we have to do is multiply the first terms and the last terms. So the rule states that when we're multiplying conjugates together, all we have to do is square the first term, square the last term, and then the sign in the middle is always going to be a negative because if we multiply a positive times a negative, it's going to be negative. So if we use that shortcut with the um, conjugates that we just multiplied together, if I take the first term and square it, I get x squared. If I take the last term and square it, I get 25 and put a minus sign in the middle. Now remember, this only works with conjugates. Okay, so let's multiply these conjugates using the shortcut. If I take the first term and square it, if I take that 8x, you have to take the whole thing and square it, then we would get 64x squared. If I take the last term and square it, 3 squared would be 9. And what sign do I put in the middle? Minus. And that's it. Okay, so then let's do it again. Now, um, n or example n is backwards from what we're used to seeing. Um, the term with the variable is second, but that doesn't matter. Take the first term and square it. 4 squared is 16. Take the last term and square it. That would be 81 x squared and put a minus in the middle. Now you can't just switch it around and say 81 x squared minus 16. The minus sign has to go with whatever the second term is because I'm multiplying a positive times a negative that gives me a negative 81. The 16 is not negative so don't switch them around. Okay so then for this last one we have uh, 2 fifths x we're going to square that. So remember, when we square the fraction, we just square each part. 2 squared is 4. 5 squared is 25. And we have x squared. <clears throat> then 3y, when I square that, I get 9y squared. And we put a minus in the middle. And we're done.